This episode of Scam Nation brought to you by our friends over at Squarespace. Give them a try. Squarespace.com slash Scam Nation. Use promo code Scam Nation at checkout. Get 10% off and keep us in business. Time travel. The year is 2008 and a new show and channel is launched dedicated to scoring free drinks at the bar. Hosted by a dude with an outrageous hairstyle that's totally out of touch with the current fashion trends at the time. Look how far we've come. That's right, we're going back to 2008 because some of you guys never saw this stuff, you gotta get caught up, and some of you guys have forgotten about it because it was 2008. There are three steps to getting a free beer, getting your bar tab picked up, getting that special somebody's phone number, and it begins with openers, then you do a tweener, then you do a closer. Here are three from 2008 that you're gonna love. First opener we ever taught is still my favorite. Remember, the purpose of an opener is to attract somebody's attention by providing a valuable experience without asking them to do a single thing. You want something that's gonna cause people to say, wait, what was that? Do that again. Once you have that, then you go forward. But for my money, you can't beat the human chimney. You like that? Here's the way this works. When you strike a match, there's a little bit of smoke at the beginning during that initial sulfur flash. When it burns, there's almost nothing there. It's only when it goes out that you see all that smoke, right? Turns out that in that initial sulfur flash, by the way, I'm pretty sure this kills you, is some chemical that if you inhale it, will draw out all the water vapor from inside your lungs. So it's almost like a vaping thing. That's not really smoke you're seeing, but water vapor coming out of my mouth. So it's simple, you don't want a breeze around, but you wanna to strike towards your face, right under your nose, you're gonna inhale, it's gonna tickle. That's putting it mildly. You're gonna act totally cool like it's no big deal. You're gonna grab that smoke, you're gonna mime throwing it in your mouth, and then you're gonna very slowly release it as if smoke appeared out of nowhere. The crazy part is you get more smoke out of your mouth than the matches themselves create. If you've done your opener right, you have their attention and they're actively wanting more. That's when you hit them with a good tweener and a good closer, which I've got for you right after this. Guys, I am so stoked that Squarespace is sponsoring this episode. They are one of our OG sponsors all the way back in the scam school days, over 10 years ago. I fell in love with the fact that they have beautiful designs. They make it easy to get your message out on a website. But nowadays, I'm all dialed in on the fact that your website is going to look awesome, whether it's on mobile, tablets, televisions, computers, desktops, uh, skywriting. I'm pretty sure. I'm not 100% sure about that. But the important thing is if you have something to say, they make it easy for you to look good while you get your message out. Try it out for yourself. Squarespace.com slash Scam Nation. Give it a free trial. If you love the service, spoiler alert, you totally will. Use promo code Scam Nation at checkout. Get 10% off for you and support this very show. Thank you very much to our friends at Squarespace. This is the big mistake everybody makes, is they try to go directly into a magic trick. Magic trick requires action on their part. Don't do that until you provided value. You have to earn their respect and their attention before you do anything. That's why those openers are so important. But once somebody wants to see something, once they've agreed to give you their full attention, then you could do stuff like Quicksilver matches. For this one, you'll take two books of matches. You're gonna take one that's colored and one that is uncolored. You'll take one match from each book, put it in your fingers, and clearly show where they are positioned. And then right in front of them, right in front of their eyes, with a simple flick of the wrist, they change places. It is such a startling visual that you're gonna be tempted to keep doing this over and over and over again. The more you do it, the faster they're gonna figure out what's going on. Don't oversell this one. Just do it long enough to get that, holy crap, what just happened moment. Once you have that, then you move on to your closer. I love this one because it's impromptu, it uses natural objects you find in the wild, and yet secretly, the method is something that is in every kid's magic set. Magicians call this the paddle move. I think we called it the pop move back in the day. Because of that bulbous flat head, when you pinch it and apply pressure, at some point it's gonna flip over all at once, just like that. By the way, I assume at this point you figured out that both of these are the same sets of matches. They're just painted on one side, not the other. Turns out that's how most matches are. So in this case, from one of these, I just reversed what is normally a colored match set to make it look uncolored. 
So to set up, you just place both of those match heads side by side. You do want to make sure that the ends are roughly the same. You don't want one with a super raggedy edge because you'll be able to tell that's the same match just rolling over. You pinch and as you turn your hand over, if I don't do the pop move, you can easily see that this one is cardboard on one side and black on the other, cardboard on one side, black on the other. But if you do this sweeping motion and you execute that little pop move at the exact same time, as magicians say, the bigger motion covers the smaller motion. In this case, it looks like there's a dark colored match on my right. And then as I flip it over, it's still on my right. Instead, in slow motion, this is what it looks like. I'm rotating my hand as I execute that rotation, leaving you with a persistence of vision that would indicate that the stick on my right is black on both sides. So in this case, the hard part is all in the setup. You're doing the magic move before the trick's begun. Remember, every magic trick, by the time you hear them say, let's begin, all the hard work has already been done. You've already convinced them that you have two different colored matches. And of course, to do the amazing transposition, all you have to do is wave your hand, do that pop move during that moment, bring him back, and don't oversell it. Once you have amazement, bank that and move on to your big fat closer. Now this is the pitfall. Some people get so excited when they fool people with magic, they keep doing trick after trick after trick until everything peters out and suddenly you're doing garbage magic and everybody's sort of drifting off with their attention. Instead, set an endpoint with an unbeatable challenge. Still to this day, one of my favorites is circumference versus height. Grab a glass. Set it right where everyone can see it. Ask everybody at the table which is longer, the circumference around the top of the glass or the height from the glass all the way down. This works great on any glass. You can make it work, but we're gonna use a pint glass because that one is most universal. Now, even at home, I'm gonna bet that you would be on team circumference up here. So that's when you begin to shift everything. Don't do it all at once. Back in the old days, you would probably grab a bunch of cigarette packs, but we'll use packs of cards. Start by adding three decks of cards. Now at this point, you're asking the same question, same circumference, but now it's from here all the way down to the table. Some of you guys at home are already defecting to team height, right? From there, you keep adding decks of cards one by one until finally everybody agrees that definitely the height from here all the way down to the table is more than the circumference around the top of the glass. Usually it's around six decks that everybody jumps ship. Once everybody is convinced that the height is longer than the circumference, that's when you are the lone idiot to take that bet. Now, in this case, I'm gonna use a string, but of course you're not gonna have a string at the bar. Usually I'll take a bar napkin, fold it along the corners, and then wrap it around to show. Every time I do this online, people think I'm using some kind of sleight of hand here. You do not need any sleight of hand. I'm gonna wrap it around, and you can see that's definitely where they meet. I'm gonna pinch it off, and you can see that the circumference, it's not even close. The circumference definitely is longer than the height. The best part of this one is there is no secret to it. Our brains are just not built to process just how long things are around. We can see things linearly, but we can't wrap our mind around those circumferences. So in this case, the trick does itself. All you need to do is set up some kind of low stakes moment. Remember, the moment you do an opener, what you're doing is you're earning their respect so they'll pay attention to the rest of your performance. Then every trick you do after that is providing value. This is a classy way to let them balance the scales. Hopefully you've given them 10 to 15 minutes of entertainment. They should be happy to buy you a drink. And it's this kind of conceit that makes it easy and classy for them to do so. All right, guys, we have a huge back catalog and I need to know from you which of these episodes we want to get a refresher course on. Two ways you can do that. One, write me at scamnationshow at gmail.com or hang out with us in our community live in our Discord. If you're doing the Discord thing, I think there's a link down there somewhere. Oh, also very exciting year. We have some awesome special guests. We'll talk about it in the Discord. That's right, that's called a radio tease. That's, that's a current term, right? Radio, people still listen to that? No, they, they don't do this finger dance either? Next thing you know, you're gonna tell me my mustache is out of date. Huh? Huh?